Welcome to XXLRC. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more work on our post-apocalyptic Mad Max build. So let's take a look at it and see what we're going to do. What we're working with here is a Sen Racing F450. And as you can see, I've already done quite a bit of work to it, but there's still some more left that I, I'd like to do. Um, not totally happy with all the rust that I've done on it. I mean, it looks pretty good, but I think it just needs a little bit more. I did feature this in one of my previous videos. I'll put a link to that up above. I've got a lot of customization done to this truck already. Some of it I kind of fabricated myself, like these panels here. Those are all made out of styrene, and then those are just self-tapping screws that hold it in. Same thing on the doors, and I got a panel up on the roof to cover where the sunroof was at. And then I printed out some pieces that we're going to put on the doors. They'll kind of fit right there. They're kind of like an armor plate. Also got some uh, bigger ones here that will fit on the front doors. Some of the other things that I've already done. I got these bumpers from Shaka Hobbies. I got the, the stacks from Shaka Hobbies. There's a headache rack. There's a toolbox. There's a fuel transfer tank back there. And I also got the rear bumper from Shaka Hobbies. I did upgrade the tires. These are just no-name tires from Amazon. They kind of resemble the uh, Nitto Mud Grappler tires. And then I got the black American Force wheels with the black spikes. Pretty happy with it so far. Just think it needs a little bit more. This is the kit right here. That's how it comes. I bought that off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. But it's a three-step process. And... The first step is this primer. You just paint it on. It's just, just like paint. And then the next step is this iron paint. And you paint that right over top of the primer. And then the last step, once everything is really dry, nice setup, is this rust activator. And this is a, a liquid. This is like a little spray bottle. And once you spray that on, it'll start to activate the iron paint and it, it will start to oxidize it and turn it rusty. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more because you can see these spots. Like I wanted to do it a little splotchy, but I'm just not totally happy with how it turned out. So I think I'm just gonna rust out those panels completely. And then we're gonna put the other panels on the doors and on the fenders and rust those out too. One thing about this kit is like the primer, lasts a long time. The iron paint lasts a long time. This stuff here does not last a long time. I found that they actually make a big bottle that you can get and I'll put the link to that as well. Well before we get started on the rest of the customizations on this truck you can see there's a lot of overspray. That stuff will come off. I'm gonna clean this up. All right got the body all cleaned up and I've moved the chassis out of the way because we Really don't need that for anything. So you can see, nice and clean on the top there. This is the first piece that I'm gonna fit, and it's a it's a little bit bigger than I wanted, but we're gonna work with it. All right, now that we got figured out kind of where we want that panel, I'm just gonna hit this. I think this is like 1,200 grit sandpaper. You know, nothing crazy, just something to to take the shine off of this. As you can see, got her nice and scuffed up. So let's grab our, I'm just gonna use some CA glue. I use this stuff for uh, for gluing tires too, but should work for this purpose. Or you could just use some plain old super glue. You, know, you can pick that stuff up at the dollar store. I'm just gonna put a glob of glue on here and I don't know what the deal is with super glue, but it seems like you know, it, it really wants to stick to my hands, won't stick to the stuff that I'm trying to glue together as well. <laughs> you guys ever come across that? I guess that's just how this stuff goes. I don't know if it's the moisture on the hands or what, but something really... You know, gluing your fingers together rather than gluing your parts together. Okay, I got that first piece done. Um, that proved to be a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, maybe this glue isn't 
the best to use on there. Maybe I would have been better off with some uh, regular super glue. They do make a two part super glue where it's the glue and then there's a spray that you put on there that like cures it instantly. Maybe I should have got some of that. And the curvature of this hood really didn't help because this is a flat piece. So I ended up um, off camera. I, I went over to my soldering station and used my little rework hot air tool to melt this a little bit to because it's just PLA material. I mean, it doesn't take much heat to form it. Um, it's not perfect, but it's going to suit my purposes just fine. I'm going to let that set up and cure a little bit before we start working on the side pieces. Okay, that's pretty well cured up on there. So when we go to do this side, I'm going to sand this down and I'm going to wipe it with that wet paper towel. Just put a little bit of glue on the part, stick it to the wet panel, and hopefully it should cure up a lot quicker than we saw on the hood. So let's give this thing a shot. I just want to check and see exactly where we want to put this. I guess kind of from that body line. Yeah, that'll be easy to line up over the door handle. Okay, so let's grab our sandpaper. Give this a little sanding. This is what it's come down to. I don't know what the deal is with the super glue tonight, but it is just not cooperating. So I've got four clamps holding on that one panel on the driver's side front door. And I'm going to let it sit there and cure. And then I'll probably end up doing the same with the other three panels for the other three doors. So my, my theory with the water didn't work. I'd also heard the alcohol would accelerate the cure process. That didn't really help, so we're just going to clamp it and let it set up naturally how it's supposed to. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit, come back, check on it, and if it's geared up, I'll move on to the next one. Okay, I've let that cure for a little while. I'm going to pull the clamps off. Yeah, it's a little loose there still. Maybe I'll add a little bit more glue, clamp it up, and let it sit overnight. All right. Picking up where we left off, um, I ended up doing a little bit of extra work last night off camera. That super glue was just giving me a lot of trouble last night. So, but I think everything's good. I kind of checked on it earlier in the day. I uh, didn't get a chance to do anything with it until now. So, but I think everything's good to go. So I'm going to start pulling these clamps off and we'll see how it's set up. Yeah, I think those are good. These two, I didn't need a clamp for. They held on pretty good. That one on the back was giving me trouble, and then these two on the doors. I like it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what, what you think about all this. Uh, it kind of looks a little funky right now because they got these black panels and there's a lot of white crud around there. But I can clean some of that up, and then we're going to do the rust over top of that. I'm going to get started on the other side. My guess is that I'm going to have to use the clamps and let that sit overnight too. But I wanted to get out here and get it started so that way we can jump into the rust because I know that's what everybody wants to see anyways. All right, here we are on the other side. Nice, smooth, clean. Let's do a little bit of body work. Well, not really body work, body panel work. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab my sandpaper figure out where this is going to go, kind of in that area, 
Okay, so just give this a quick sanding. This side went so much smoother than the other side. All right, we got the front door, the rear door, fenders, They're looking good. And this is where we're gonna stop for tonight because I gotta let this cure. I think we'll get started on rusting everything tomorrow as long as these set up okay. All right, I've let these sit overnight and uh, Looks like everything's good. There was a couple here I couldn't clamp up, but uh, they stuck pretty well. So I'm going to start taking these clamps off. Looks like, oh yeah, those are nice and secure. That ain't going nowhere. I think you have to say that, right? Or is that only with ratchet straps? I don't know. It seems appropriate with clamps. So I'm just going to start popping these off. Toss those in the clamp pile. So far so good. I know this stuff's kind of boring, but I kind of wanted to show the whole process. Just, you know, if anybody was interested in how we attach these or anything like that. So, yeah. Everything's on there. Looks, uh, looks real good. So I think we're ready to get started on rust. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, those look real nice. There's a little bit of a you know, gap, but man, these things are on there good. So I I think we are good to start start with the rust process. Let me show you the front here. That looks good. Oh yeah. Well, that's had a couple of days to to cure this side much sloppier than the other side but uh everything's on there i think we're good to go these little ones i was a little worried about but i think they're gonna be all right to get started we need some supplies so we've got our paint tray that we'll use for the uh for the primer and the iron paint and then i've just got these cheap paint brushes that i picked up at hobby lobby it's three bucks for 30 of these brushes. So we got my primer that we're gonna start with, and then we'll do the iron after that. Sometimes that, that stuff can be a little harsh on the brushes, so I just get these cheap ones, so I don't need anything fancy. All right, let's get started with our primer. We're gonna use this one first. So I'll just give that a little shake. I already shook it up some. We're gonna fill up one of our spots in our paint tray. And you know, before I had said, uh, I kind of want to do this kind of splotchy, but I just don't like the way that it looks. So I think I'm just going to cover all this stuff that's left, all these black spots on that panel and these other panels. And we're just going to rust out the whole thing. I think I'll leave the roof kind of how it is. Maybe I'll add a little bit more here and there, but I kind of like the spottiness on the paint. It almost looks like the rust came off of these panels and is just kind of running down the side. Nothing real crazy to this. Uh, you don't have to be clean with it. Just kind of get good coverage. I just kind of dab it on there. I mean, it doesn't, it's supposed to look rustic. So you don't have to have like perfect brush strokes in it or anything like that. Just get it covered up.
see I got a little bit off the top there and that's okay. You know, you don't want like perfectly straight lines. You don't want it to look like it was painted on there. I am being a little careful here because I don't want to get it on the window because that would look weird. But everywhere else I'm just kind of putting it on however it lays. If you had perfectly straight lines, it wouldn't look like natural rust. That's why some spots are a little light, some are real heavy, just to give that variation, just like, you know, a, a truck would naturally get rust on it. That's what we're going for here. That's kind of why I pat it on there, so it really looks like that oxidized rust that you would see after years of abuse, which this, the whole theme of this truck is kind of like a post-apocalyptic, like the world is coming to an end, and like they quickly put these panels on here to keep the enemy out. They didn't bother, you know, rust-proofing them or anything, and this is just kind of the way it, it turned out, and I, I think it's going to be really cool once it's all done. Can't wait to see the, the finished product. So even these spots that already have rust on them, I'm still going over them again. You know, just to give it a, a really cool finish. Same thing with these exhaust stacks. Like I kind of wanted to be a little spotty with the rust, but I'm just not real happy with how they turned out. I kind of wish they were more like this bright orange rust here. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing again just so we can try and get a little bit more vibrant rust i don't know if it's because it's a, a 3d printed part so they kind of have a little bit of a texture to them already if that's why i didn't or maybe i just didn't put enough iron paint on there but just wasn't too happy with how they turned out i mean they look okay but they can be better and since we already got the paint out might as well hit them up too All right, moving on to our newly added panels on the doors here. And it, it, like if this was my first round with it, I probably would have just tried to do the bolts, you know. But now that I know kind of what I want, I'm just going to cover the whole thing. And a little bit around it. See how I shove my brush in there? Just to kind of give it like jagged edges around it. Just like that rust is spreading onto the... The finish of the truck because after all this is like a a brand new truck so what, what are the chances of it being rusty the only rust on this thing is coming off of these panels that we added
All right, uh, everything's covered up that I want covered. I'm gonna let this sit and dry probably about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna put another coat on. Let that dry for 15 minutes, half hour, something like that. And then we can get started on the iron paint. I got this thing set for a while. Uh, I said 15 minutes, but it's probably been closer to a half an hour now. And uh, I went pretty thick with the primer. So you can still, you can see there's a lot of spots that are still kind of wet. And my brush is stiffened up a little bit. So rather than put another coat on, because I think I got pretty good coverage, I've just been coming through and any of these thick spots, I just kind of hit it with the brush, kind of give it some more texture, make it look a little bit more rusty. That'll be a good, a good foundation for our iron paint. Looks like our primer's all dry, and actually I'm glad that I, I did go a little heavy on the primer and I came back and knocked on those spots, because if you look, everything is really, really textured. I think it's just gonna give so much more to that rust look. It'll look like it's kind of bubbled up under there. So now that the primer's nice and cured, gonna start with our iron paint. So we'll give that a good shake. This stuff's super thin, so gonna have to do at least at least a couple coats of this fill up our tray and I was able to wash this brush out so just reuse the brush we use for the primer Let's start on this thing I'm just gonna start on the hood here same kind of technique that I did with the with the primer doesn't have to be perfect. Matter of fact, the less perfect it is, the better it'll turn out, I think. Just looking for really good coverage. So we get that really good rust look.
shut up and sit down. First coat of the iron paint is done. I'm going to let this sit for 15 minutes, half hour or so. Come back and check it and see if we need to touch up any areas. Just checking my first coat here. It's been about 30 minutes, although it's a little cooler today. So you can see there are some spots that are still a little wet. And uh, I'm just going to go around the truck, see if there's any spots I need to touch up. Because there is a lot of dry spots. You can see the lighter spots are already dried there. I got a little bit of this iron paint left from the first round. So I'm just going to go and I think there's a little spot here. Just touch that up. But I don't know if we're going to need a full second coat. I, I guess I kind of went a little heavy on this too. So just go around the truck here. Touch up anything that needs touching up. And I'm going to let this thing dry. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let this sit and dry. Apparently it's going to need a few hours. Like I said, it's a little chilly here today. So the garage isn't temperature controlled. So I'm kind of at the mercy of the weather at this point. So the iron paint is finally dry. It took way longer than expected, but that's just because it's a little chilly out here in the garage. But I'm just checking everything over, make sure we got proper coverage. Looks pretty good, as you can see. Everything is a nice light gray color. I did go really heavy on this one. This one took the longest on the hood. Everything looks really good. Really like how it's turning out so far. I'm going to transfer this over. I have a little bin sitting on the floor. I don't want to spray that. Uh, rust activator on my bench so I'm going to set this thing up on the floor over there and spray it down and let it sit overnight okay this is where I'm going to set it up on this bin here and but before I spray the body down I'm going to show you these chains that I got you can get these little scale RC chains I think I got them on Amazon or they came in a box of stuff it's just these they have little hooks on the end and uh, I, I did soak them in that rust activator fluid but you can see this one's not totally rusted out this one's pretty good you know there oh well, there's two of them here but those ones pretty good but before I spray the body I'm gonna lay these in that bin and give them another spray Might as well, since I got the, I got the rust activator out anyways. So if we can get a little bit more rust. I think I'm going to use these to hang off that front and rear bumper. Yeah, this one is just, this one's a little bit different. It, uh, it really came out pretty rusty already. So hopefully the other ones turn out like that. Okay, I got my chains laid out in there. Just going to use some of this. Rust activator. Just got a little pump spray on it. There we go. Just want to spray it on, you know, pretty liberally. Make sure you get lots of coverage. Just gonna seal this up. Get, it, get the body. Spraying that. So I'm just going to start at the top. Get everything nice and wet. And if I spray on, you know, some of that existing rust, that's okay too. All 
All right, that's it. We're done for tonight. We'll let this sit overnight, let it rust up, see what it looks like in the morning, and uh, we'll just go from there. It may need another coat of this, or it may just need some more dry time, so we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Well, I let this thing dry overnight, and as you can see, everything's pretty well rusted out. There are some spots where you can still see that iron paint, and I might come back through with the spray. I don't know. Looks kind of cool to me, so I may just leave it as is. But look at this windshield. Look at how cool that is. There's so many, like there's some real dark rust down here. There's that bright orange rust there. And there are still some spots that are just iron. Same thing with the hood. We got some really good rust here. Not so good there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Over time, I think it'll get a little, little bit rustier. If not, I'll do another light coating of that, and uh, only time will tell. Pop this thing open and see how our chains turned out. Ooh, I think they look pretty good. Those are some nice rusty chains. I'm just going to lay these out on the floor, let them continue to dry, because they are still a little wet. That one, for whatever reason, still, you know, not as dark as the other two, but looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Got the body all fitted to the chassis, and look at this thing. It just, it looks so menacing. Like, if, if this was for real and you saw this thing pulling up, um, yeah, you know it's about to go down. So I think I'm, I'm just about done with this thing. Last thing I want to do, I'm going to play around with these chains. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I think I want to, you know, kind of string them across the, the front bumper here somehow. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll wrap them through. Who knows? I'm going to just play around with this and, and see what I can come up with. little playing around with the chains uh, not sure if I'll leave it like this kind of cool got the little hooks just kind of hanging wherever and uh, I like it I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a winch for it there is that fair lead there that's built into this bumper and then actually on the back there's uh, a mount for a winch on there so maybe at some point I'll add that on and yeah I don't know if I'll have to move the chains or not I guess I guess I really don't have to, to be able to use it, but I, I think that's a super cool look. So I'm going to flip it around and see if I can figure out how I want to set up the back. Okay, the back chain is all done up. It might hang a little too low, I'm not sure. We'll have to see after we run it. But I think it looks really, really good. So I'm happy with that. I can always change it up later. But for now, I feel like I need a tetanus booster after <laughs> all that rust. So I'm gonna go clean up my hands, and then we'll take it out for its, uh, its first run in its final form. 